Welcome to the Deli Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. Or Beverly Hills Cop 4. My brain is already wondering if I'm going to put that in the thumbnail when I upload it to YouTube. Not sure. In any case, Beverly Hills Cop 4. I enjoyed the movie. I think it's really... A little better than the third one and i did a podcast a couple weeks ago on the first beverly hill cop movies the three and i was surprised that um i enjoyed the third one although it's not my favorite i think i had a bad impression of it and i hadn't watched it in a while so i enjoyed it i think this is a little better but it's a little i don't know lackluster in certain parts a couple of nitpicks here and there but it's fun to see Eddie Murphy back in the role, seeing some of the cohorts in this, his buddies. And I like the atmosphere, although, again, there are some things I would I would rather have it done. Uh, the movie's directed by Mark Malloy, and I think it's his first um, movie to direct. Uh, um, I really like that they got some of the, you know, uh, you know, get the fucking actors' names. But you've got Judge Reinhold is back. Uh, John Ashton, the two cops. Although Ashton looks old. Give it to him for putting his, you know, time in and really doing a good job. Um, I think Bronson Pinchot looked pretty good for his age. And Kevin Bacon's in it. Um... Taylor Page plays Jane Saunders, and this will be some spoilers mixed in, although I don't get too heavy into these things usually. The movie's basically about, uh, he's still a Detroit cop, Axel Foley, doing his thing, and his daughter gets involved in a, uh, well, she's a lawyer defending um, people or criminals, and that leads into a big plot type thing he has to go out to beverly hills and i'm not one to judge but i would have lost a little more weight or worn a girdle or something but i know he's old and he looks amazing but the reason why i mention it is because i think you could have for me solved the problem if you just put a gun in his hand because he doesn't have a gun in his hand until way into the movie it feels like and as soon as he has the gun and he's holding it moving around it's it's like you're watching the you know original beverly hills cops to an extent his body postures mannerisms they seem different than when he's just walking around smiling or you know doing his thing and he just looks a little too um chunky for me but i'm chunky in a way so i'm not you know it's just like you're an actor and i get it but all in all, it's like a little nitpick, and there's a couple of cringe moments in the movie. The um, relationship stuff with his daughter, I found, was a little forced, and I don't know, it didn't feel too um, natural and flowing, but it's a fun ride. It's not bombastic and spectacular, but the music is back, and that really got me. Way to go, Nostalgia. Um, it's directed by Mark Malloy. Okay, I haven't, I think it's his first, um, role. We've got Eddie Murphy, Judge Reinhold, John Ashton. Although, there's one of my little nitpicks in here. Um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Taylor Page, who plays Jane Saunders, his daughter. And you've got Kevin Bacon in it, and he, he, he's great. Bronson Pinchot looks awesome for his age. I mean, like I said, even Eddie Murphy looks fucking amazing, considering how old they are. So, with the plot being what it is, him being in um, Detroit, I thought there would have been a little bit more with his age and his um, rank, so to speak. Is he a detective? You know, how long has he been doing it? But to see um, Paul Reiser as the captain was fun. There's a little bit of a heartfelt moment uh, in the beginning and towards the end because he's got to leave Detroit. And he's got some of the charm. It's there. You know, it's it's Eddie Murphy. So uh, I'm not a big fan of... I think I talked about this in my podcast I did a couple of weeks ago, which 
was on the first three Beverly Hill Cops movie. And I was surprised that I really enjoyed the third one, although I don't think it's the best one. I think this one is a better. But I didn't, I had bad memories about it. And going into watching it, I was almost regretting it. I'm glad I did because I actually enjoyed it. And um, this one feels like it's part of the, you know, the franchise. It doesn't feel super out of place. I do like um, the way they paired him up with, uh, I think it's Ashton, right? Who's, um, he's like the captain now. Or the chief of police, John Taggart. But one of my nitpicks is Judge Reinhold's in it and he's, he disappears. Well, granted, it's part of the plot in that um, he's gone from the movie, basically. But, I, you know, at the end when they, they get together and they're teaming up, it's it was the most fun for me to feel that camaraderie. I thought it was done great in the original movies, especially when um, at that time, Chief of Police, who hated him sort of in the, in the beginning, came to respect him and isn't the second movie i think is um well it could be the third at this point uh, where they try to assassinate him and he's in the hospital and it's felt by all three of them and there's a pretty good um through line with john ashton and kevin bacon when axel foley shows up and of course gets into his own bullshit and he's like yeah i'm arrested <laughs> Uh, and he's got to make his phone call to his daughter. There's this uh, Chief John Taggart protecting Kevin Bacon. And you know when you're watching it, Kevin Bacon is, you know, the bad guy and, and for the most part. And it actually came through, came across pretty well. I, I was enjoying that. Um, at, by the end of the movie, Axel Foley gets pissed at him and calls him out on things so with spoilers here here and there as judge reinhold of billy rosewood disappears in in the way the story works he left the force or was fired it was like a private eye and he's worried about this certain case eddie murphy's daughter is defending the uh client who's being accused of being a, a cop killer. So the stakes are pretty high in that thing, but as she gets involved, that's when Eddie Murphy has to, you know, come in because uh, Billy Rosewood calls him and he apologizes for getting her involved. So there's a bit of a backstory you don't see, but it's, it, it's not super well done, but it is explained as the movie progresses and especially at the end, you don't get to see Billy and them really join up. And the major plot of the movie is Eddie Murphy wants to find Billy. He could be in trouble, that type of thing. And he's got to connect with his daughter and, you know, create that bond again. And I didn't think it worked well. Maybe that was the central part of the movie that was really supposed to you know, really hit home, and it works for the most part. It just didn't captivate me um, like I, I thought it should have, although there are moments. Like I said, I enjoyed this movie. Um, the nitpicks I had, like I said, is uh, Billy not really being around, and I really wanted to see them all together, because at the end, when they do get together, it's it's crazy and seeing John Ashton, Chief John Taggart, really because he's old and you can tell he's old and a lot of the things he's saying talking about it is he's old and you know being married and but being a chief he should have protected billy um you know brothers and the force and best friends type thing and he doesn't and throughout the movie he's giving kevin bacon way too much leeway and then the joseph gordon levitt i think it helps when Eddie Murphy has a little bit more support in that in the first movie when he's doing his thing and he's spontaneously going into like a um an accent or you know trying to get his way in here and there when it came to some of the set pieces and stuff having the buddies there uh, Billy and John was really helpful in the old movies 
So hadn't jo Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the movie and kind of tagging along and it's found out that he dated his daughter and he's like a former helicopter pilot and that's part of a little uh, zinger they put in there. And um, so there's that friction. So you got the father, Eddie Murphy, coming to see his daughter, try to help her out, you know, warning her about things. Of course, she gets into it. The um, awkwardness of this other cop that's there is um, used to date his daughter. And when he gets arrested, it's by, I think, Joseph Gordon never the one doing the, uh, you know, booking or whatever. And look, there are good moments here and there, but as the movie progresses, it just it has a bit of a lull here and there, and I really didn't feel it until he pulls out a gun, and it just feels weird to say, say something like that. But, you know, Eddie Murphy's walking around, and you, you want him in that jacket, and you want him to look a certain way, especially act a certain way, because it's such a mem memorable character, and I had just watched the three. So yes, people get older, he has a daughter, you know, he's going to save her. So I'm down for the whole movie in general, but I, you know, the music really saved it for me, I think. And if that's a nostalgia working, like I wouldn't be surprised if this movie's not getting like super critical scores or rave, but I bet it's a solid entry into the Beverly Hill Cop movies and I think that's all you can ask for. I mean, I'm really not even sure how fucking old Eddie Murphy is. Like, he's got to be old. I'm old. And for him to do this, I thought it was great. I wonder why it took so long. It does feel like that. Like, when I did my little wiki scroll through, it's, um, like, in the mid-90s, they were fucking going to do another one. But his attitude from the third one, when you read about it, he, he thought the movie shouldn't have been made. There was nothing special about it. Maybe that came through in his acting, if it's all true, whatever. These are the things you do when you look into some of the history on these pages, IMBD and Wiki, when you're going to do a podcast and you want to see about production and stuff. Like, oh, this movie got a $16 million tax break in California. Well, you better, because it's got your fucking Beverly Hills cop on the fucking, in the name. And by the way, like I said in the beginning of this, my brain doesn't want to put Beverly Hills Cop Axel F as my fucking title on my YouTube upload. I don't know why. So I don't know why that's bothering me so much. Like, should it even be something that bothers me? But when you look at him on the thumbnail cover, sitting on the car, um, with the jacket on, it doesn't feel... um. It doesn't feel like that represents him totally in the movie. And yeah, we can do photoshops with filters, make it look good. But if you're going to show Eddie Murphy, you know, older and, you know, maybe not totally in shape, you, you had to put him in certain positions. Like I said, as soon as I noticed the gun in his hand, I was like, whoa. I noticed immediately it was different. The silhouette of his body, the outline, the things you got to do pretending or acting like you're a cop and that totally worked I, there was one other point i wrote down that i really enjoyed where he's going into a hotel i think it's a hotel and he starts going into an accent and halfway through his explanation he's like ah fuck it i'm too tired how much for a room or something like that maybe i'm mixing scenes up but it just showed like you know he's not gonna burst into these routines to get himself a free room or you know, talk his way past things, but it is in the movie in certain spots. And I think it was smart to highlight or to start bringing his daughter in on those moments. Cause like I said, I'm not, I, I didn't buy his, I'm a bad dad. Um, you're a bad dad type thing for the movie. Although it, she's a great actress. He's, you know, doing his thing. It just didn't really gel, but the times where she sort of caught on to what was going on and when she started seeing his her father's value as a cop, because even he says, um, well, you see what I did? Like, you know, like he's kind of proud of himself, but for the wrong reasons. And 
you know, the heartfelt story at the end is he kind of realizes, you know, I got to apologize. I'm the father because the daughter says something like, no, you're always the father. I'm always the child, even though she's an adult. There's some logic to that. And there's a feeling I'm sure a lot of people will resonate with. Another reason why I think this movie will do pretty well. Or, so I, know, I don't think it was released in theaters, but it'll it'll garner some attention and um, praise from the fans of the show or the, you know, the, the franchise in general. It's Axel Foley. He's, he has got to mature, right? God knows how old he is, 60, 70, and he's a detective in Detroit. Even the, the um, Paul Reiser, chief of police in Detroit, He's like, no, you're fucking, you're too old. What are we doing? And I did like that because of what Eddie Murphy did, um, Paul Reiser was going to take the fall for him and retire, sort of. You know, he can't get at himself out of trouble. But the music, the certain um, smiles he gives here and there really draws you back in. It's, like I said, my, my I don't even really have problems with the movie. It's just, um, I... I think in my head, I saw a traditional, if you want to call it that, it's not, not there's 11 movies, but there's, you know, three. Okay, so the setup is he's in Detroit, Paul Rice is his captain, he gets in trouble, because he's got to go overboard to make the arrest type thing, and he finds out his daughter's in trouble, but when he gets there, it's like him and Billy and the chief, John, you know, the old buddy, can't participate and he is still the guy defending kevin bacon i think that's what i wanted to see and maybe that expectation kind of made me feel like the movie was meandering in certain places and focused more on the relationship and again that could resonate with this generation a whole it could be you know it could be the breakthrough for doing more movies like you could see this ridiculousness of a 70 60 70 year old detective busting ass in detroit we could shift that to him living permanently in detroit taking it easy being a consultant or even a private eye with billy but not you know out there every day hustling on the streets and it's just maybe it's time for that and this relationship with his daughter like i said it was done well i just didn't find it suited me very well but i can imagine it resonating so much with certain people you know you find out in the sense his father you know her father and the mother got divorced but axel foley didn't make the effort and it's mostly on his part although i guess you know the daughter might admit you know she's an adult she you know she could have called him up and gave him the what with all and you know made this confrontation happen earlier but in the beginning it's a lot of all right we're doing this and then you're leaving she tells him right you're doing this and then you're on a plane you're out of here and i think maybe that's what really didn't gel with me at first i would have rather have like billy have been there and he's like got to give awkward looks and again nitpicks about a pretty good movie in general um although if i'm you know thinking about it usually on my notes i make you know notations about things and what i noticed was i didn't get any like camera angles or really impressive or surprising or noteworthy camera movements and alignments so maybe that was intentional to keep it the way they filmed the original movies. But this is just nitpicks when you're thinking about, oh, the fourth movie in the franchise, Eddie Murphy coming back off all this time, giving a break here and there, but having more to do with a, a, a daughter relationship and her ex-boyfriend. Because instead of Judge Reinhold, he kind of gets paired up with Joseph Gordon-Levitt for the you know, the, the middle portion of the movie where, you know, shit's happening. And there's a real funny scene, spoilers, where they've got to escape. And um, because it's something really stupid. Like, if I'm right, um, Kevin Bacon's character is no longer on the police force. 
or his men aren't. I can't, I don't remember, but anyway, it's like crooked cops everywhere, so they gotta escape, and Joseph gordon Lover keeps asking, why are we going to the roof? You know, we, you know, when they get to the roof, there's a helicopter there. Now, there's a joke here and there, and it's something mentioned. Uh, Justin Bowden Livett was a helicopter pilot or like SWAT team type thing. But what he doesn't tell Axel Foley until he's up in the air is that he crashed his helicopter. <laughs> it a good, it's funny. Look, the movie's good. It's got some you know, really good moments. The music really, I think, gels this together for me. Nostalgia is fucking strong. It's powerful, especially someone like me. And I had just come off the three movies in anticipation of watching this. Maybe my love of like seeing Judge Reinhold, Billy, and John, uh, you know, the old curmudgeon being buddies. And they give it at the end. I'll give them that. And yes, it had to be done differently for... You know, I guess it's in day and age, but my more perfect vision would have been Eddie Murphy, you know, 20, 30 pounds lighter, um, really give him the jacket and, and the, um, the gun right away in the movie, just even if he's doing stupid shit, cause he mentions he's got to get a gun, that type thing, his daughter, a couple of things, you know, foreshadowing really blatant. But it works, you know, the daughter's got to come into her own in, in a sense from being, because she talks about Eddie Murphy training her to like get out of handcuffs and do all these things. And well, what do you know? All in all, an enjoyable movie, a good addition to the original franchise. I don't know if you can ever capture the first one again. He's just so surprisingly good and fresh and energetic in the movie. And he's older now. You got to give him credit for that. Again, <laughs> I don't know if I want to want to do a a quick. Maybe I'll do a quick thing. I'm I'm dying now. I'm dying to know how old he actually is right now. Um, who wants to guess? Uh, let's see. Sixty-one, 40. yeah. So he's he's sixty sixty-three. Good for him. But would have liked him to be much more slimmer, looking more of the part. But again, it's part of the movie's charm. Maybe for, for a lot of people, he is older. He's not. You know, he's sixty-three fucking years old, and it is talked about in the movie. Here and there with his, you know, detect uh, Detroit commit, uh, chief of police type guy. And seeing Bronch and Pincho in there, they do a little um, setup with him and the daughter. And again, it, the thing with the daughter becomes much better as she starts catching on and I guess forgiving him. Man, maybe it's just that type of thing. You don't want to see the you know, father and daughter be estranged. And she's vehemently like, get the fuck out of here. Like, you know, and good stuff. It, it, it just, again, I think my brain was so into the trio of them that I just was like, kept wondering why isn't Billy in this movie? And they let you know, spoilers at the end. You know, he's trying to help the daughter and he's getting involved in the case, which I think he left for is revealed. Um, and he's been fucking captured and kidnapped. And when they find him and get him out, of course it's at that time. <laughs> um, Chief John Ashton, whatever, is now weary of Kevin Bacon's character, but it took way too long he has way too much power for a former cop it was the classic scene which is done way too many times where they pull over Axel Foley after like fucking nutty shit trying to get away in a golf cart or some fucking nonsense <laughs> and um eventually when they catch him in a car oh no no they somehow corner him or something and they find drugs in his uh trunk 
of his car. But Kevin Bacon's there, and his whole, like, black ops team, like, they're not cops. So it was a little far-fetched for me. But I did like the fact that John Ashton, the chief of police, is protecting him. He's like, no, he's a, he's a cop. I trained that guy. And his blind faith in him is ignoring, he's basically ignoring his best friend, brother, Billy Rosewood, that is not taking his back. And it's put in the movie. Part of the quick action thing at the end is um, that apology and that acceptance. And there's another great line as John Ashton is like hiding from cover as the bullets are flying. And Judge Reinhold's like, I think he says something like, you know, let's fuck these guys up. <laughs> and he's like, you're insane. But it wasn't that line. It was like, I don't think I can get up again, Billy. <laughs> he's like, look great moments in that sense i just wish it was more you know i get it i still think you could have had billy in a different role than being somebody who's in it that he does set off the chain of events that gets you know axel fully involved and um you can tell he knows the daughter well you know there's a relationship there she's worried about him looking into it and she's trying to get her you know, her defendant free because he's been set up. And then it, it comes together pretty well. Again, you know, I don't know if you're going to capture the magic of the first one. And watching all three might have gave me the expectation of, hey, I know that John Ashton, you know, he's going to be older. But I think my brain just kept telling me, where's Billy? Where's Billy? You know, when are we going to see this? very familiar you know bouncing off each other chemistry type thing that they really almost perfected in the in the original series and it just wasn't there although again i do like eddie murphy and john ashen's character interacting because at first eddie murphy's like hey buddy you know Miss billy you know we're worried about him and you can tell uh, john ashen's like um you know billy fucked up did it but and he has to come to terms with the fact that he isn't he, he wasn't backing him up he didn't have his back he didn't believe him you know pertaining to the case and you know the things that are happening in that fucking um so i call yeah see the actor's name is john ashton is chief john taggart <laughs> but he's legendary in my opinion he's probably said such a career you know him immediately but he's old and he can't move around but and they use him well and eddie murphy at the end really having enough of it, it's like bro you know you fucked up you gotta this guy's a fucking and throughout the movie eddie murphy's showing his skills he's like you know guy's got a two thousand uh a rolex and thousand dollar suit and shoes whatever the fuck you know that's not a cop that's uh a former cop and that's a, so it's a little bit outrageous and i think that it's just my expectations that aren't giving me the feels that uh are i'm not raving about the movie again beverly hills cop axel f i don't know about the name i enjoyed the movie i just have this feeling of like a missed opportunity however i wouldn't be surprised if they try to do another one this is Netflix type thing. And it, this is why on one of my um, podcasts where I didn't really like Rebel Moon or fucking Zack Snyder's other movie, but I was talking about how I think it's good. Because I know the argument could be made, oh, this, this director's making shitty movies, and I agree, I don't like a lot of his movies. But that these deals he's getting on Netflix and making his movies is a good thing. I enjoyed the movie Bright that was a special Netflix or a streaming movie. And if this can give Eddie Murphy the confidence and the zest and the, you know, the um, drive to do Axel Foley movies with the budget, you know, you don't have to do nothing crazy. It's a fucking buddy cop movie. I, I could see them doing another one. And again, you could keep the theme going i just don't want to see him you know trying to jump from roof to roof or you know um 
in insane gunfights in that sense. However, it works. He's 63. He's not fucking crippled and elderly. And again, as I'm getting ready to finish this up, I I think it's my expectations of of the movie that kind of give me a little bit of a, you know, downer in a sense where I wanted to see this huge buddy cop movie type. And again, it is shifted. It's Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It's his daughter. And they're working in the daughter relationship stuff, even with the the ex-boyfriend, because he even says, you two having sex or something like that? And it's kind of awkward. Good awkward in that sense. Um, again, I think my the only thing that's stopping me from really raving about this movie is uh, it's just Judge Reinhold being gone and that buddy aspect was shifted and just I wanted to see something else. But again, Beverly Hills Cop 4, Axel F, whatever the fuck it's called, and that's still bothering me. Good movie, good addition to the franchise. I'm glad to see Eddie Murphy back in this role. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like going to do, you know, another 48 hours or <clears throat> revive certain other aspects. And, I you know, thumbs up. I'd recommend this in that way. Good for him. Um, the music, again, like I said, really captivated me and pulled me back into the past and the soldier. And good acting all around. You know, even the daughter, uh, Kevin Bacon's character, you know, you know who he is right from the beginning plays it well and i think it's a real far cry from what he is in real life like it seems like a you know farm animal owning nice guy and he can play a swarmy shitty fucking villain when he wants to you know great actors great to see bronson pincher you know continuing that thing i wish they would have brought in like another actress or something that was from the other movies but again all in all I liked, I really liked uh, Billy Hills Cop, Axel F. I have some nitpicks and gripes here and there. And I think it's my own expectations that make me really not rave so much about the movie. I'm happy I watched it, that type thing. Uh, maybe, um, yeah, I guess I'm excited for another one. If they told me um, there's another one, let's see. Uh, I still have one of the pages open, right? No. Oh, future. On June 21st, Eddie Murphy and Jerry Bruckheimer revealed that a fifth Beverly Hills Cop film was already in development. Oh, fuck that, right? So there is another one coming. <laughs> you know what? Good. This movie was not a, a fucking shit fest bomb that annoyed me or anything. It just feels a little, you know, like I said disappointment but that's my own expectations the daughter relationship thing was pretty good again does it have some lulls and it feels lackluster yeah eddie murphy's not 20 fucking years old anymore and it, it kind of shows and but i don't think there's a shitty effort this isn't a milking it for money type deal and getting john ashton back was like amazing judge reinhold i just wish it was done a little bit different but that's all I'm going to say about that. I think this is something everybody will like in a general sense. If you're familiar with Beverly Hills Cop and a franchise, I don't think you're really going to go wrong. Again, the setups are similar. You feel like you're still in the world. It's not jarring. And there's some heartfelt moments that I think people will attach to more than I am. So in saying that, I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care, everybody.